URC conferences, folks, how did they compare in this inaugural URC season? That's what we're going to have a look at today. Remember, we've got the Welsh, the South Africans, the Irish, plus the Scots and Italians in their little groups. I'm kind of keen to see how did the Irish go up against the South Africans? Was home and away a factor? Did anybody have the wood over anybody else? We'll go through that kind of quickly and you guys can let me know your thoughts, see what trends there are. I should say before I get started to that, I did gather all this data manually and I checked it once and found mistakes and then I checked it again and found another mistake. So it's quite possible I've got the odd error here. Fingers crossed not, but hopefully it's indicative anyway of, uh, of how things went. If I did make any mistakes, feel free to let us know in the comments where exactly things went wrong. Um, for the Scots and Italians, they're lumped into the same group, but I want to look at them separately briefly. Uh, the Italians obviously didn't have the best run in the URC. Um, by my count, they managed seven wins, and um, a couple of those wins are Italian teams beating Italian teams, uh, if that makes sense, because Benetton beat, beat Zebra twice. So that's five wins against teams which were not... Uh, Italian, you've got two over the Scots, those are Benetton's, two home wins against the Scottish teams, they've got one win over a South African team, and two wins over Welsh teams plus a draw, the Italians couldn't manage any wins over the Irish teams, be it home or away, so, I mean, I don't know what much to say about the Italian teams this year, other than that Zebra had a pretty miserable season, which was starting by my admission, by my count, by my look, uh, to get better. It was starting to get better towards the end of the season, but a bit too little too late. Benetton were really struggling with so many of their players getting selected in the Six Nations squad, so their depth was really tested. Um, so they'll still be a little bit disappointed, but um, yeah, if a few of their players can get picked up by overseas clubs, then uh, maybe their ranks don't get pilfered as much by the Italian team uh, during Six Nations times. But anyway, like I said, not the best look for the Italian teams in this uh, inaugural season for the Scots one of the really pleasing aspects I guess will be is the Scottish sides proved very difficult to beat at home uh, by my count they only suffered two losses at home and both of those were to Irish sides no other conferences were able to go into Scotland and get wins if I'm correct it's Ulster beat Edinburgh and Leinster beat Glasgow those are the only two results where away sides got wins in Scotland, which is in itself is a, is a really good record. But what that may also means is the Scottish sides didn't do that well on the road. Um, the Scottish sides, I think, managed 20 wins between the two of them, but three quarters of them were at home, so 15 home wins, five away wins. One away win in South Africa, though, and those proved pretty hard to come by. Um, two away wins in Italy, those are both over Zebra. Um, so that's again, maybe where you're looking at the conference things and you see the Scottish sides have got a little bit of an edge, uh, is that they get to play the, the weaker Italian teams, at least that's the case this season, uh, one win in Wales and then one win in Ireland. And to be fair, um, wins away in South Africa and Ireland proved pretty hard. So credit to the Scottish teams. I think, um, Glasgow beat Connacht, was it? And, um, yeah, Edinburgh got a win, uh, in South Africa. I only think two European teams managed wins in South Africa and uh, Edinburgh was one of them so yeah the Welsh sides it was um it was slightly dominant it wasn't like you know five wins three losses so not totally dominant they dominated the Italian teams six to two um but yeah certainly home and away was it was a big a big theme for the Scottish sides uh for the Welsh sides obviously there's a fair bit of negativity going around the fact that none of their sides made the eight Interestingly, with the Welsh sides, when they play each other, there doesn't seem to be an advantage for being home or away. It looks like an even split between home wins and away wins. So a lot of away Welsh sides went away in Wales and uh, managed to get a win, if that makes sense. Um, like I said, with the Scots, they, had, they ended up on the flip side having a negative record to the Scots. Um, no away wins in Scotland. Uh, no away wins in South Africa. There were a couple of away wins in Italy, of course. But um, yeah, people who... Travel to Zebra tended to find things uh, pretty beneficial. No away wins in South Africa, man. South Africa proved proved a really a really tough place to go. So the Italian, not the Italians, the the Welsh against the South Africans really proves to be lopsided. By my count, the Welsh sides managed two wins, but they suffered uh, six losses at home and then eight losses away. 
So, yeah, the, the South Africans absolutely had the wood over the Welsh. That seems to be a big problem. Whereas the record against the Irish teams, in comparison, is actually a lot better. There are four Welsh wins at home against Irish teams and one even on the road. I think that was the Dragons, right? The Dragons went in and got a win. Was it at Connor? But I think the Irish side's only lost, was it two at home? So, uh, I mean, to, to non-Irish sides. Yeah, and one of them was a Welsh side. So that's um, that's a little bit of a positive. But I think it was Connacht that dropped both the home games. I don't think Ulster, Munster or Leinster were defeated at home to a non-Irish side. So, um, yeah, their record against the Irish sides, they get five wins overall. I mean, they lose 11. So five against 11 is, is not great. But it's certainly better than their record against the South African teams. The South African teams are the ones that really gave the Welsh sides the most trouble. Speaking of the South African teams, kind of like I mentioned, because we've looked at the other teams against the South Africans, you've already got a kind of clear idea. Um, South African sides struggled in um, in Scotland and they struggled in Ireland. No South African sides were able to get wins away, but they had a pretty happy time in Wales getting six wins. Uh, they had a pretty decent time. Uh, in Italy, getting three wins. They only suffered one loss to the Italian teams. I think that was the Benetton guys beating the Stormers, actually, which at the end of the season seems unimaginable. But at the start of the season, it did happen. Um, but yeah, the, the South African side's record at home was phenomenal. The only sides who managed to have a decent chance of getting an away win in South Africa was actually the South Africans. The South African teams had better away records than they did at home. There's a lot of away wins in South Africa for the South African teams. I don't know how that works. Uh, by my count, it was four home wins, seven away wins when they're having their little inter-conference games. I don't know how that makes sense. Whereas to the European side, they drop a grand total of two games. So, yeah. If you want to beat a South African time side in South Africa, it helps to be South African. Um, the split against the Irish is pretty even. Uh, when they're at home, they win. When they're away, they lose. That's that's pretty much it. So, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one uh, as we get into the playoffs. And uh, for the Irish sides, well, you've, you've probably kind of already got the idea now because we've compared everybody else. Um, the only sides to get away wins in Scotland were the Irish sides. They had the split with South Africa. Irish sides win at home. South African sides win when they're at home. Uh, they were the only teams... To go 100% against another pool that I'm saying, uh, in that they were 100% against the Italians. Nobody else was 100%. Um, pretty dominant against the Welsh, but not as dominant um, as like the South Africans were against the Welsh. And um, interestingly, when the Irish sides, there's a helicopter going over my house, when the Irish sides played the Irish sides, it was the home side that generally got the win. But there were some sides who kind of did the double over the others. Like Leinster did the double of uh, Munster. Ulster did the double over Leinster. So there was kind of a little bit of trading of results. If that kind of makes sense. But yeah. That's pretty much my quick look at it. I really just wanted to get a feeling for it. So like the Italians overall I think need to be better. That's a take. The Scottish sides are very good at home but need to be better on the road. The Welsh sides generally just need to be better, but especially against the South Africans. They really, really had a hard time with South Africans managing just two wins. Uh, the South Africans, I think, um, have probably adapted a bit better to the competition as things have gone on. I think they really struggled early on. In Europe, they've proved very hard for the European teams to beat in South Africa, but the same is kind of true in reverse with the South African side struggling on the road, except for against Wales. So in, in Scotland, in um, Ireland, kind of proving tough. So that's going to be an area, especially if someone's going to have to go to Leinster away or somewhere like that to get a, uh, a final or semi-final result. That's going to be crucial. And the, I mean, the Irish teams, you kind of know about the Irish teams. They were pretty dominant against everybody, except the fact with the South Africans, they had the whole split of of home and away so yeah i hope that was at least somewhat interesting or insightful it was certainly interesting for me because there were certain kind of ideas i had in my head but it was um, nice to really uh see it on paper um we'll see how things play out with the quarterfinals semis and the final in this first urc competition but anyway 
Hope you guys take care of yourselves, stay well, and um, yes, let me know your thoughts. I will talk to you guys again soon. See you later.